Hey, how's it going? If you've ever wondered what to practice on the guitar, how to practice guitar, well, I wanna share with you my own personal practice regime. This is something that only takes a few minutes, is dead simple, and it's really benefited me a ton, so I wanted to share it with you here today. My name is Will Ripley. You're tuning in for guitarcontrol.com. All right, just a couple things before we hop in. Make sure to grab that PDF. That's a free download for you guys. It'll go along with the lesson and just have all the notes and basically all the show notes that you need to go along with this lesson. Also, I wanted to let you in on something that we're doing really cool right now. A few years ago, I authored a program called the 1960s Rock Guitar Song Collection, which featured 50 songs. It was an enormous project and an enormous task for me as a teacher to, to learn all these songs and all the bits, all the solos, the chords, you know, the riffs, all the bits and pieces to each one of these songs. It was super fun though because I love the songs from the 60s. Um, but also, there's a 1970s song collection and a 1980s song collection. So 50 songs from each of those. And if you can do some basic math, you'll count up 150 songs if you get access to all three courses. And that's exactly what we've done. We bundled them all up. It's called the Essential Song Collection. So you get the 60s song collection, the 70s song collection, and the 80s song collection. So as mentioned, I authored the 1960s program, but my friends from Guitar Control, John and Darren, they, uh, they did the 1970s song collection and the 1980s song collection. Anyways, we bundled them all up. They're all available for you. Make sure to check that out because it's a great opportunity to, work, to learn even just like a handful of these songs, but you'll have access to 150 of some of the greatest songs of all time. And they're all broken down, you know, note for note, step by step, uh, with all the tabs and all that good stuff. So make sure to click that link below to check out that song collection. So what I wanted to do is share with you my own personal practice regime. This is something that's benefited me a lot. It's really dead simple, and uh, it's gonna help you with two main things. Number one is your physical ability. Okay, and I actually mean like physical ability, like going into the gym and grabbing a big bunch of weights and lifting them up. Well, we wanna be able to do that kind of equivalent on the guitar, right? We wanna to get tough tips of our fingers, we wanna have callus built up on each one of our fingers. We wanna get kind of the muscle control, flexibility, and all that good stuff. Also with our picking hand, we wanna get good control. So physical ability is a really big one on the guitar. Without it, you're not gonna be able to play very complex stuff or really any kind of fancy stuff without it. And the other thing that this practice regime will help you with is rhythm, okay? So just understanding some of the basic, most important rhythms. So we're gonna talk about half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, and 16th notes. Those top five rhythms, and that's it. We're not gonna like talk any kind of crazy rhythms or anything like that, but we are gonna be working with a metronome today. And so those are the two big things that you're gonna get out of this, physical ability, and improving your rhythm. And I really believe that even though we're not necessarily gonna be playing a song today, uh, we're just focusing on those two aspects, but everything on the guitar really comes down to those two things. And, and playing music in general is your physical ability, getting your fingertips on those strings, getting this right hand, picking the right notes at the right time, and then of course rhythm. And without those two things, you really don't got much going on. So that's what we're gonna focus in on. We're really just gonna focus in on those two areas. And just a bit of backstory on where this came from was I had, a, I had kids a couple of years ago and it really changed my life. And maybe you uh, moms and dads out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I didn't think it was gonna change my life so much, but it did, especially my second little baby. And they're really close in age together. So I found myself um, dadding a lot. And, but as you can probably tell with this guitar in my lap and all the music gear around me and my guitar lessons and everything, like guitar is a really big, important part of my life. And it's a constant uh, journey to get better at guitar. And it's something that I've, I've really dedicated a huge portion of my life to. And, but I was really getting frustrated with my guitar progress because like at the end of the day, after a long day of work, and maybe you can relate to this, uh, whether you're dadding or not, but like at the end of the day, you pick up the guitar and it's like, what do you practice? What do you play? How do you get better? Okay, and so I started doing these two, th these two exercises that I'm about to share with you. And it was just a way for me to, at the end of my long day, when I'm just totally zapped, to sit down, pick up the guitar, get some really good quality practice in in a short amount of time. And that's where it all came from is, uh, becoming a father. <laughs> so anyways, let's hop in. 
Uh, the very first thing that we'll go over is I'm going to share with you uh, a couple of different ways to, that people describe this. One is the spider walk. Uh, I've called it the warm up scale on some of my guitar lesson videos. Uh, it's almost a chromatic scale, it's not quite. But anyways, it's basically just this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and remember when I said that this is brain dead simple? I wasn't lying, right? So that's all we're gonna be doing. However, I think that there's something really important uh, to say when we actually play all of the frets on the guitar. So I've particularly chosen my Strat today. It's a vintage style guitar, uh, which doesn't have a, uh, I, th I think it's just 21 frets. Let's see, 15, 17, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, it's just 21 frets on this guitar. Uh, some of you acoustic players are gonna get chopped off at you know the 14th, 15th fret. Um, but the idea here is we're gonna do the spider walk, but we're gonna zigzag up and down through it and we're going to play every note on the fretboard, okay? And I think that's the biggest thing here is we're gonna activate all of our fingers, we're gonna activate really good solid technique, we're gonna get a hand planted on the bridge and connected to the guitar, and we're also gonna be alternate picking throughout this. And the one thing uh, that I wanna point out is that if you go down, up, down, up, and then when you switch to the next string, you're always gonna start on a downstroke, okay? And that's fine. But if you wanna just switch it up, you can start on an upstroke, and that means that when you switch strings, you'll start on an upstroke. So up, down, up, down, and then you gotta hop over that string and do an upstroke. So I think it, that there's some value in, in that. So, but yeah, I just wanna point out the right hand here, the picking hand is just as important. You're getting a lot of value here. So uh, with that right hand planted on the bridge, and that goes for a Fender style bridge, Gibson style bridge, acoustic bridge. Getting that hand planted is just uh, absolutely enormous and will really, really help you. So get the hand planted, get a slight finger curl around that pick so that, that your pick is just at a slight angle. That will really help you with your alternate picking. And yeah, like I said, either choose all downs uh, for your starting point, so down, up, down, up, or when you get more comfortable with this, definitely integrate that up, down, up, down, okay? just to get the practice in either direction. Otherwise, we're gonna play on the tips of our fingers nice and close to each one of these frets, so we don't wanna get any of that, that fret buzz sound. We wanna uh, really focus on clear notes. And the one big thing that I wanna point out here is this practice regime is not about playing fast. This is not about uh, speed demons, you know, and, and playing super fast and, and things like that. What it's all about is perfection and finding comfort on the instrument. And that get, gets back to that physical ability aspect, is just getting more comfort, getting more comfortable with this weird instrument in your lap and under your fingers. Okay, so we're gonna be playing with a metronome today, and a metronome is really, really important. And this is a beautiful way to start getting uh, the metronome integrated into your life because we, uh, a lot of guitar players don't really know how to practice with the metronome. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna play, for each one of these clicks, we're gonna play one note at a time, okay? And we really wanna drill right on top of that metronome. We don't wanna be early, we don't wanna be late. You wanna really focus on that metronome uh, as well as all these other things like uh, focus, relaxation, breathing, like not tightening any weird muscles and just being like really aware and very present with this, uh, with this practice, okay? So I, I got it set to 80 beats per minute. I can, I can certainly play this faster. You probably can too, but again, that's not what this is about. This is not about ripping fast and tearing up the fretboard and things like that. It's, it, there's a lot to be learned about playing a little slower and we're really going for perfection in this. So here's our tempo. So go ahead and join me. We're gonna start on the very first fret and we're gonna spider walk through. And the one thing that I haven't mentioned is that when we get to the top, you're gonna move up one fret and then you're gonna go down. And then when you get down to the bottom of that one, you move up one fret and then up, et cetera, et cetera. So we're doing like a zigzag spider walk through this progression and we're gonna play every single note on the fretboard that this vintage style Fender Stratocaster will allow me to anyways. One, two, ready, go.
All right, and get ready to shift up. All right, and all the way down this pattern, nice and slow and easy. And get ready to shift up again. There you go, and all the way up this pattern. So we're gonna keep this going. And I just wanted to just kind of coach you through this as we go, go through this. It's all about shutting off your brain. We don't have to think about this too much. All we have to think about is that click and our fingertips touching the strings and our pick hitting that string at the exact same time as that click. Just bring yourself into this moment. Nothing else matters right now. It's just all about guitar, this quality time, and this practice. And as you do this, let's see if you can do a big, deep breath and also find comfort in, in maintaining the rhythm, maintaining the good, solid technique as you breathe and as you focus on these really basic movements. Awesome, you're doing great. Stick with me. Just bring your focus towards that click and see if you can be right on top of it. Not before it, not after it. Exactly when that click clicks, you're hitting the string. And if your mind wanders, just see if you can bring it back. See if you can think about those tips of your fingers, the sensation of the guitar in your lap, that click, this really basic, straightforward technique. shift up and a zigzag down. Awesome. And the next thing that I want you to bring your focus and attention towards is just relaxation. Let's just see if there's any tension in your body anywhere that there doesn't need to be. So all we need for muscle and physical ability right now is these tiny little muscles in our wrists. So let's just check into your shoulders. Just see, maybe you can drop your shoulders down a little bit while we're doing this. Maybe you're doing something funny with your leg or your neck or just some sort of part of your body that might be engaged right now that just doesn't need to be. That's it. And as we get into the higher register of the frets, the frets get closer together. And so it does become more challenging. So let's just see if you can find comfort in this higher register of the fretboard and maintain all those things that we've been talking about so far, the relaxation, Just the, some of those basic physical sensations. And breathe. Awesome. We're almost there. Just see if you can keep it slow. 
Let's not rush it. Cool, and if you're playing a Gibson, of course, you'd have even one more fret to go. Uh, thanks for hanging with me and sticking with me through that. I salute you. Uh, I love that exercise. It's, um, it's not about the actual kind of thing itself. That's, it just, there's so many more deep layers to that of just like clearing your mind, being present, and going for perfection, playing each one of those notes crystal clear, focusing on that rhythm, really trying to be just perfectly in time with the metronome. And I found myself also like tensing up my shoulder. I always do something like kind of weird with my right shoulder. It doesn't need to be jacked up like that, right? You can have uh, a lot of relaxation and comfort to be found with the guitar. Uh, and it's just, that's part of the practice. So the next thing I wanna hop into is rhythms. So we're going to back it down to 60 BPM and we're gonna talk about the main five rhythms. So we've got half notes, which are gonna be like this. So if that's our tempo, two, three, four, we've got one, two, three, four. So every second beat. So go ahead and join me on that. So I'm a little early. Early again. Yeah, like almost every one of those, I'm just coming in a little hair early. And if you can't tell, reel that back and, and see if you can catch that. I'm, I'm a little early each, each one of those times, so I'm rushing, okay? So those are whole notes. Even though it's just I'm just choosing uh, that third fret of the low E string and just playing each one of those, uh, you know, and just really focusing on the rhythm. It's not about how fast it is. In fact, sometimes when uh, you're playing against a metronome and it's slower, it can be more challenging. The next rhythm is gonna be quarter notes. And then, by the way, I'll show you guys how to practice these. We're gonna cycle through them and back through them again. So, one, two, ready, go one note per click. feeling pretty good about that. And the next one is eighth notes, which means now we're gonna do two clicks per note. So that space, two, three, four, we've got this space in between, and we're gonna call those the ends. So it's gonna be one and, two and, three and, four and, one, two, three, four. So we still have our down strokes on each one of the clicks, and but now our up strokes, are right in between. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. Next one is triplets. So this is now, uh, these ones get a little bit more complex. They're not so straightforward, but triplets are counted in threes, uh, <laughs> maybe obviously. But uh, so our downbeat is always gonna count as our one, two, Three, just like the other ones. So we're gonna hit that right on the click, but we've got two notes kind of like right in between the first click and the second click. So there's two ways to, that are, that's really popular to count these. One is one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, okay? Or uh, even a more basic one is one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Let's give that a go. So that's something you can sit on, just get really comfortable with triplets. I, I noticed I had to settle into that one and go ahead and catch me, roll back, and you'll see for yourself. It took me a couple beats to, to just get settled into that triplet pattern. Um, and also I wanted to point out that because we're in, in groups of threes, you're gonna go one, two, three, 
and then the next set, the next click will start on an upstroke, right? Just because of the odd number. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? So it has that kind of feel to it too. Um, and also, uh, we'll do this in a minute, but you can also do this with a chord. You can go one, two, three, 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 okay? And the final top five rhythm I'm gonna share with you are 16th notes. So in this one, we still got the same clicks, but now we're gonna go, and we still actually have that and as well in the eighth notes. So we've got the one and the two here, but what we got going on is we've got the and in the middle, but then we've got so, so there's the end, but then we also have an, uh, an E and an A. Ah. So the letter E and the letter, letter A, that's how we kind of count them and feel them. So one E and A, uh, two E and A. Uh. So one E and A, uh, two E and A, uh, three E and A, uh, four E and A. Uh. So those are 16th notes. Super, super important rhythm to know. So here we go, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, and you can just sit on that and get comfy with that. Now what we're gonna do, and this is where things get a little tricky, is we wanna be able to sw uh, quickly switch in between them. So we're gonna go, we're gonna start from half notes, or we're gonna go to quarter notes, and to eighth notes, up to uh, triplets, up to sixteenths. So, and why don't we do, we'll do a, a package of uh, three, four, we'll do two bars of each, so eight beats all together. So let's start with the, ha uh, the half notes. Three, go. One, two, three, four, and switch. Quarters. All right, switch. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and, and switch. And switch. Okay, now go back down to triplets. And back down to eighth notes. And down to quarters. And down to halves. All right, so those are the two things I wanted to share with you here today. Those are two very powerful things that you can just quickly do. Play every single note on the fretboard with a metronome, focusing on all those aspects. It's not about playing fast, it's about warming up and either starting your practice regime uh, or just doing this and ending, right? Like that's kind of the idea here is like, sometimes I'd be so tired at the end of my days, as long as I would do these two things, I just knew that I was gaining more physical ability and I was working on my rhythms, which are just so important. So my challenge for you is to integrate this into your own practice and play every single note on the fretboard with a metronome and then switch to practice the top five rhythms, the half notes, um, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets and 16th notes, and then actually go in that sequence, go through the five and then go down the five. So thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next lesson. And until then, keep on ripping it up.